Hello, could you hear me? There we go, it's finally working. I mean, yeah, I'm so glad you could make it. I mean, the first thing I really ask is just, where are you calling from? Uh, Texas. Fullerton. From Chickia. In Seattle. Arkansas. Vancouver, BC. Louisiana. And wherever you're tuning in from, welcome to Milky Narder. If you're new here, hi. My name is Spencer Chan, and this is my podcast, Milking Ardor. On this podcast, we hear all sorts of stories from people from around the world. We share people's life lessons that they've learned, the experiences they face, and the passions they are pursuing. If this sounds interesting to you at all, please help me spread the word, because Milking Ardor is primarily word-of-mouth advertisement. So if you could help me get the word out, I would love that a lot. On this week's episode, we are going to be hearing from Marcelo Hernandez, an outstanding comedian and overall just an amazing person. See, Marcelo, uh, he actually tricked me and he actually got me to turn on my camera, which is not really something I normally do when I do the interviews. I mostly interview without the cameras on both my side and the person I'm interviewing, but Marcelo got me and here we are doing an interview with videos on so if you want to check out our faces and just see us you could go on youtube and watch us there if not if you just want to listen to the audio this is it right here so without further ado you're a young you're a young beast out here you're getting your stuff taking my glasses off too no <laughs> need for the glasses i hate the you're glare a, you're a, yeah yeah i feel you i get yeah, some glare yeah. on them Dude, you're a young beast. I was I started comedy at 18 years old <laughs> in in Cleveland, Ohio, going to shows with a bunch of older people and just like just kind of, you know, adapting to that environment. So I love sure. what you're doing, bro, and I love that you're a, I love that you're a young kid out here getting it. So um Thank hell you. yeah, dude. This is dope. Yeah, this is like really interesting because I actually like never really like fully just dis- Absolutely, <laughs> man. And it's yeah. only it's only going to go up, dude. All you have to do is be consistent and you know make them all the time and never stop making them and even when people say it sucks just keep making it and you know never stop dude i got lucky bro i used to people 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 have talked you know about my comedy being bad and how somebody called me a bathroom break comedian once they said that if you want to if you want to go to the bathroom for now is the time before this guy gets on stage i've been through it all so and then now it's going it's stuff stuff's going a little bit better so yeah it's kind of just solidified for me the idea that you just can't stop dude never ever stop if you like doing this if you like sitting there <laughs> putting your headphones on and doing a podcast never stop doing that yeah and you're you've been in the comedy back or like comedy field for like eight years right um so no i i've been there for i've been to, since i was 18 i started and then so in january it'll be five years gotcha yeah so okay. still st- still a baby in the game basically <laughs> there's this guy there's this you know jerry seinfeld of course great so um the way i think of it is um i always think of jerry seinfeld because jerry seinfeld says that you're the amount of years you've been doing comedy is your age in comedy so if you've been doing comedy for five years you're a five-year-old you know you're like a baby Mm, 10 years old now now you're starting to get a little older you know you're starting to figure it out and then when you're like you know 15 17 18 years in now you're starting to understand life and understand you know how this game works sure so you know having that having that mindset about comedy has made me very patient throughout the entire process. Like I've never been like, it has to happen today. I'm like, mm. dude, it's going to happen when I'm 15 years in. You yeah. know what I mean? So For sure, you have to I, build yourself credibility. Right. Over years yeah. and years and years and years of grinding. And if you accept that for your industry, I don't think that you're like, the opportunity for you to succeed is way higher because you've become a long-term investor versus like a quick in and out. Guy, yeah. You know? I think for me too, it's, it's not really about the number of years or it's more like, it's not about the fame really for me. It's just to do this exactly. Just to interview people from around the world. So I'm glad I'm able to talk to you today. 
and hear your uh, story. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just proud. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud Thank that you. I, you have a, you have a mic stand that works. I still don't know how to set up my mic stand <laughs> and you're, you're killing it, dude. Yeah. Right on. I mean, just to like formally introduce yourself. The first question I really ask is what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Marcelo and I am calling being called from Miami, Florida. That's where I live right now. All right. And I don't know your relationship status, Marcelo, but if you were on a first date, what are you saying to really show who you are? Um, if I'm on a first date, I don't know, man. I think on a first, <laughs> it all depends on the depends on the moment. You know, depends on what's sure. going on. I'm a I'm a very observant person, mm. so I think maybe what separates me is maybe like when we're at dinner, I'll probably notice like the way somebody is holding their fork. Or like, yeah. or like what the, uh, or like what the waiter, you know, what type of hairstyle they have or something weird, something very specific. And, um, I'll probably notice it maybe make fun of it. Maybe laugh, maybe not. For sure. Why yeah. would you say that is why, what's the appeal to being so observant for you? I don't know, dude. Like when <laughs> I first heard Seinfeld talk about like how he likes talking about faucets and like just like random stuff. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> like I, I would love to talk about things that are just like tiny and people think they're meaningless, but they aren't like, like topics that are just like random. And I don't, I, I don't curse on, on camera or like when I'm filming my videos and I also don't talk about sex. So I've kind of like, chosen this life where i create content that is you know seinfeldian like it's about just random things that people do and humans do that i find interesting i think i'll, I'll have more fun talking about that than yeah. talking about going out and drinking or partying or girls or any of that for sure how would you say that this type of viewpoint of life really has affected your relationships or your comedy well i think it's affected my relationships positively because you know anybody that's with me in a romantic or just a friendly way they kind of know that i don't really air that out mm -hmm. for comedy mm -hmm. i kind of choose to dabble on topics that are general and then dive into them and pick them apart i, I i'm this will be done but this won't come out by the time the video comes out but my next <laughs> video is about peeing it's about when you pee interesting like spencer let me ask you something do you like to pee i love to pee isn't it the best feeling i drink so much water a day just, just so you could pee just so i could pee so, so i like i have really i'd say i have like pretty okay social skills but of course i'm like also introverted so sometimes i just have to get out of there best excuse i gotta pee <laughs> what, are, what are you gonna do stop you like no i gotta get out of here now that's best so thing. true man peeing yeah. is the perfect excuse <laughs> It really is. Because nobody's going to be like, nobody's going to be like, oh, yeah, prove it. That's true. Who, who's to, who is to tell you you're lying? No one. But if you like fake That's an great. injury. That's so great. Yeah. If you fake an injury, people are going to be like, oh, okay, yeah. you're faking it. That's something you could fake. But I have to pee or I have to like poop. Like, can't what? fake that not to mention not to mention peeing feels great <laughs> dude there's no feeling like peeing yeah especially when you just get those like shivers you know dude ah you know you know how people <laughs> how people they they drink a drink and then they go ah i have never done that i have never taken a sip of a drink and gone ah i've never done that really but every time i pee i either think or i <laughs> verbally go 
Wow. What was the the spark of inspiration for this upcoming video of yours? I don't even know, dude. I was just like, <laughs> everybody loves to pee. Like you, the, the, the video is basically about how I could walk into a bathroom and there could be poop on the walls, graffiti, a cat. And <laughs> once I start peeing, I'll feel like I'm on an island. It's true. It's definitely a you know what I mean. A euphoric experience for everyone. And and if you don't like to pee, <laughs> if anybody that's listening to this doesn't like to pee, you should see your doctor. Mm. Because you should like to pee. Yeah. Interesting. You should. It, it should be good. <laughs> Once this video coming out. Uh, tomorrow so tomorrow. whenever this comes out it will have come out so check out my peeing video <laughs> if you love to pee it's out now it's when does it when does this come out uh, uh i normally post on saturdays but i'm kind of stacking because i have school oh, so okay. this might come nice. in like spencer. two weeks in two weeks or something like that you're very smart spencer you should start stacking <laughs> that's very genius of you yeah when did so comedy started for you at age 18 what was the appeal how did you get into it um i was a college soccer player i played soccer in college and um basically every year in high school i was playing soccer year round mm -hmm. and then college soccer was the first time where after the season was over i was kind of done for a while like i had some time off and I had done a little bit of acting in high school. So I was like, you know what? Let me try this open mic comedy show. So I took some friends with me to an open mic during my soccer off season. And I just loved to do it. I loved preparing the material. I loved going up and sharing it. It didn't even do well, but I just love that. Like, I love that if like, if you do this correctly, people will laugh like sure. that idea that idea was just priceless for me. And I was like, I have to, I have to do that. Interesting. So then would, did you say that you are where you wanted to be from age 18? No. <laughs> where did you think um, you were going to go or be? I, well, the thing is this, this, um, this virus situation has really put a, um, put a twist on everything. So yeah. I was actually I was actually in New York City when it when it all happened. I was living there. I was doing comedy every night. I was selling tickets on the street to strangers. For comedy? So or what are the tickets for? For comedy, yes. For my gotcha. own comedy shows. Right on. So when this happens, when all of this goes down, my entire life got flipped. But, you know, during this pandemic, I've gone from, you know, 2000 followers to 3000 followers on Instagram. And I've gone from zero followers on TikTok to 92,000 <laughs> now. So, yeah. I mean, I've, I've made the most out of it, but it's definitely not um, where I thought I would be. Definitely not. Yeah. What brings you to Miami? My family lives here. Mm. So I came back to be with my parents. Being with your parents is weird. My parents are divorced. It's kind of like the best thing right now is having divorced parents because you know you kind of have two homes to choose from it's nice interesting yeah i've never thought about it that way yeah so it's kind of nice like the other day my mom came home from grocery shopping and i was like hey mom could you wash your hands and then she goes did you even floss today <laughs> and i was like what and she was like did you even floss and i was like why why are you asking that and she was like, do you know how much bacteria is in your mouth? <laughs> and I was like, I still don't understand why this is relevant. And she goes, don't worry about my hands. Worry about your mouth. So when she said that, I was like, I'm going to my dad's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how you could really convince out of anyone, your mom or a parent that... uh interesting yeah she did not want to um she did not want to wash her hands and so i was like you know what i'm gonna take a trip over to pop's house <laughs> see what the vibe is like yeah 
Just like she's even, very nice. She's she washed her hands, everybody. It's a it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Of course. I mean, just like even before this pandemic, what was your regular schedule like? Or, I mean, are you even planning to go back to New York or are you going to stay in Miami after this quarantine? So we'll see. It's kind of like we keep saying, everybody keeps saying this. That, so after quarantine, what are your plans? Like, what you sure. know, after this is all over, what are your plans? <laughs> it's like, let's have it all be over first. Yeah. And then I'll think about it. For now, for now, I've, I've found a little bit of work here in Miami. So, I'm excited to get to work um, on stuff here for a bit. And, um, you know, if, uh, if this opportunity works out and I enjoy doing it, I'll, I'll, con- I'll stay here for a while. And then, um, you know, eventually I think I'll have to move to either New York or L.A. at least for a little while just to, um, you know, try to get more work. It's all about work, Spencer. That's all I'm looking for is work. Yeah. Is. I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase the question in my head where do you see yourself like in the future even just like is this still working on the line of work you're doing now or comedy next Jerry Steinfield yeah I I mean I hope man that would be <laughs> that is a that is a dream of mine to be the next Jerry Seinfeld uh, I want to be the Hispanic Jerry Seinfeld I want to work clean be Hispanic provide um you know illuminate the Latin community um yeah. you know I want to, you know, show people how um, how different Latin people are. There's so many different types of Latin people. I'm like, I'm pretty fair skinned. You know, people <laughs> usually think I'm a white guy, you know, which by the way, fair skinned, I don't like that term. It's like, so what are people that are darker unfair? Like, how does that make yeah. sense? So I, I would say I'm just light skinned. And so people think I'm a white guy, but, um, you know, I have, you know, friends that are Hispanic of all types and of all races and i kind of just want to exemplify that in an artistic way so i'm a cuban dominican comedian and this is what i look like and this is what i sound like the same way there's you know a lot of different types of people that are hispanic but i definitely hold my hispanic culture yeah i was just like thinking about it just like okay clearly i don't think things are ever going to go back to normal but if things were to like get better overnight think about how awkward and kind of like shitty we're all gonna feel inside having to like go back to school or having to go back to like a workplace you know like you can't like clip your toenails anymore you can't like pick your nose you know yeah picking your nose is so over <laughs> picking your nose is so over and 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 biting your nails is yeah. so over you can't get away with it anymore i was looking at my teeth <laughs> yeah you cannot get away with it anymore you have to think before you bite your nails now i used to bite my nails without thinking now i'm thinking i'm like did i wash my hands yet did i use a sanitizer am i ready to bite my nails am i in a place in my life where biting my nails is an okay thing to do (laughs) right on so as a comedian you clearly must or okay you're kind of like a baby i guess the way you explained it you're like five years old Uh, but how would you say your storytelling skills have improved or how's that yeah i think they've improved definitely i mean i've um i'm getting it's just all practice right so the more i do it the better i feel i get at it um uh i think that it's basically the way people talk about it in the comedy community is that there's no replacement for stage time so mm. the more that you can get in front of people, the more that you can perform, the better you'll get. Yeah. So I've kind of noticed that stage time is not even an option right now. So my camera and my videos are my only stage time. So I try to do that as much as I can. And the more I do it, I guess I get better at it. And hopefully, you know, I'll reach a point where um, it just becomes my life. Like I, I don't want to work and I don't want to do anything other than this than do comedy talk to you do podcasts <laughs> yeah you know, perform i just want to do that as much as i can have you heard about like the online comedy shows i know that's like happening i was talking with some other comedians yeah i've done a few of those i've done a few zoom shows um it's fun i mean it's stage time man at the end of yeah. the day we're in a pandemic and you still need to practice bodybuilders are finding a way to continue to build their bodies you know what i mean yeah like 
everybody is everybody's finding you're look at you look at you working out of your brother's room just so you can make it work so you can keep your dream going i don't have the nobody should have nobody has the luxury to just do nothing that's true very true nobody nobody even ellen degeneres is like putting instagram stories on now because she needs she needs to interact with her audience nobody is just doing nothing so you have to do something yeah i think the moment you kind of just take a break that's when things kind of go downhill for you literally as soon as you stop moving as soon as you go idle it's over yeah so just totally. tell me something crazy that's happened to you or just kind of really weird or just tell me a story um huh craziest thing that's happened to me I'm trying to think i feel like i've gone through something weird recently um, I, um, well, this is a, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> um, let me think. That's a good question. Something weird that's happened to me. Do you want to maybe inspire me? Do you have anything weird that happened to you recently? Man, I was not expecting that for the tables to turn. <laughs> the flip? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that completely threw me off. Wow. Um, yeah, dude, just anything weird. Has anybody said anything weird to you? Do you go out a lot? I don't go out at all, dude. I don't really go out at all. I don't really hang out with people. I'm very I'm very COVID conscious. So very few weird things have happened to me recently. Yeah. Because I've just been I've been kind of laying low. Um definitely Instagram going I mean TikTok going crazy. That was weird. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. Um I, I have a story. Having, Ooh, nice. All right. All right. Inspire me. Um, I got invited to a party and I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going. Um, so everyone kind of knew like I'm clean and there's this girl in my class who was going around the class asking for people's pee. Okay. That's yeah. kind of strange, but I wasn't expecting her to ask me since I wasn't that close to her. But then after school, she came to me and she was like, Hey, Spencer. And she just went straight into it. Could I have your pee? what why why are you asking for my pee she's like well i have a drug test and i'm not clean and i'm like oh i'm like you can't ask any of your other guy friends or girlfriends and she's like no because they're not clean either and i was like oh so the moment she like turned around and someone called her name i just kind of i just dipped not i was not doing that for her yeah yeah you did not give her the pee i did not give her my pee well yeah, that, I mean, I think you did a good job. I think, um, you know, you're not that close to her. You don't want her to think that you're just giving out pee, you know, to That's just true. anybody. Um, you know, don't give away your pee. That's the <laughs> lesson to all the all the people at home. Um, I, I can tell you that I have given my pee to one of my friends before. Um, it's more common than people think. It is more common than people think, you know, sometimes you just got to help your buddy out. Um, but uh, that was, you know, in high school a long time ago, obviously, I'm in, have, I don't just give away my pee. As a, uh, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a hobby of mine, but sometimes you have to get it done. Um, I, uh, I will tell you a story about how I, um, I actually this. So this is actually a decent story. This happened to me in college. So um, I was in college. I was talking to a girl and it was Valentine's Day. Mm. And I I, uh, I got a big sushi dinner prepared for us. And I invited her over to come have the dinner and some wine. And she stood me up. Okay. Oof. She didn't show up. Right. So doesn't show up for the Valentine's Day dinner. And then... I decide that, and I have I have a trip to Chicago the next morning, mm. so I was hoping that she would come. We could hang out, and then she could take me to the trip at like it was like a three a.m. two a.m. trip, like we were going overnight. So I was like, yeah, come hang out, and then you can give me a ride to the you know my trip. So she doesn't show up; she just disappears, and then I decided it's a great idea to eat all the sushi and drink all the wine. Mm. I thought that would be a good idea. Yeah. So, um, the next day at 2 a.m., I'm going on a class trip with people from my school. A class trip. So, okay. 
Yeah, so I drink all the wine and I eat all the sushi. <laughs> so now I am full and drunk. Yeah. And so and I just got stood up on Valentine's Day for the first time in my life. So after that I went I took an Uber to where we were leaving for the trip, right? So I get there, I am just very intoxicated. And I sit on the bus and I'm just like having a great time. And then we get on a train to Chicago. On the train to Chicago, we get to Chicago. We get to our plane. We we get to our hotel. Yeah. My wallet, my wallet is gone. Oh. I lost my wallet. I check my phone. People are swiping my card at like a McDonald's. They're swiping it on the train. I'm losing money as time goes on. So I call my bank. I let them know there's fraud going on. They're like, we can't help you. Now I'm in Chicago with no money. So wow. I have to like get a parent to Venmo a friend so that I can have some money, a like hundred bucks for like a few days. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm at this conference with my school and there's a talent show and I volunteered to do comedy at the talent show. By this point, I was like a year into comedy. So I do the talent show. I win the talent show and they give me a new computer. Wow. So, so I end up going back to my school with no girlfriend, no wallet, and two computers <laughs> the most ridiculous turn of events i have ever been through but that definitely happened to me and it, i just I'm saying that that i left with i ended up with no wallet no girl and two computers interesting <laughs> so what do you have like what do you do with the computers did you what happened to the credit card the credit card, I had to wait like a month. It takes forever to get a new credit card. And then the computer, I gave it as a gift to my dad. I think he maybe gave me some money for it because um, I had definitely lost some money. And then I ended up doing some shows in Chicago. It was a great trip. I just, I'll never forget the first <laughs> time I got stood up because that was the whole, you know, yeah, like the whole turn of events. Yeah, it started everything for that disastrous but also eventful highly eventful series of events yes it was a highly eventful series of events (laughs) yes spencer that is that is a great way to explain it i mean you get a story out of it i see i see many positives to this maybe because i'm just naive or optimistic but no it was a very positive trip but it definitely started in a very negative manner so yeah maybe a, a little less little lesson to people that when it goes and gets tough you know stick around because you might end up with two computers right on what advice would you You say to anybody starting something new i had somebody ask me this on my tiktok live today um okay and um i think that the best thing to do wow the best thing to do is and this is advice for you too spencer i know you're 13 weeks into this podcast best thing to do is to not stop so if you are drawing once a day draw once a day for the rest of your damn life if Mm. you are recording a podcast twice a week record it twice a week for the rest of your life If you like to do it, I cannot say this enough. If you like to do it, never stop doing it. Yeah. No matter what happens in your life, if you can muster up the energy to do it, never stop doing it because you literally never know when the work will pay off. So if you quit, you were risking the the idea that it was literally going to pay off a week later. 
So you can never quit because it literally might pay off. Like you, if you're listening to this right now and you're not sure if what you're doing is going to pay off, it might pay off next week. So don't quit today. And next week, think the same way. And think like Seinfeld. You have to be 20 years <laughs> into something before anything happens. Like if you think long term like that, like you're just going to do this forever and get as good as you possibly can at it. Nothing can stop you. Right on. I think just yeah. to add on to that, uh, even just 13 weeks in or even five years uh, for you, basically, um, especially with the amount of social media going on, just the numbers being thrown at you. If you're posting whatever you're doing, the best thing and, and like a, one of the best things you could do is just not look at the numbers and just kind of assume you have a mass following and you kind of build an expectation that you have to be better. And you're doing that for no one else but yourself. That's a straight up fact, Spencer. <laughs> that, is a, Thank you. that is a cold, hard fact. Thank you. I thought of it all by myself. If you do this for you nothing can stop you yeah because all the hate you're gonna get hate you're always gonna get hate remember that you will always get hate there will always be somebody that wants to talk negative that's fine that's totally fine yeah okay i'm like i don't know if you, you've probably noticed but like throughout like this like whole like interview like my the lighting has like just diminished I don't, could you tell it's like super yeah. dark in my room because I, yeah, ex- I wasn't expecting to turn on my camera but oh uh, you know now it's like dark out i'm on uh, oh I'm in california so you have the, the, oh yeah i'm i'm like facing the window and like the lights just like sun's gone so i'm, I'm gonna turn on my light real fast and then like we can get back into it marcel you're like incredibly positive what was this dry for you what 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 makes you so positive how do you stay positive um i don't look into negativity really i mean i listen i've had my moments when this stuff when this virus thing first happened i was in such a negative place spencer it was bad i was Mm. in a very very dark place for like three months bad spencer i'm talking bad i was in a very ugly place i was very negative i thought it was over i thought everything was over i i I mean i was in. i literally probably hit rock one of my rock bottoms i'm sure you hit rock bottom you know a few times during the course of your life but that was why one of my first rock bottom moments Mm -hmm. and i think i think that that is what's made me so positive is the fact that I had such a dark, dark moment a few months ago and coming out of it and feeling much healthier and much better. um, That's made me more positive. And also uh, everybody that I follow just tells me to be positive. Everybody that I look up to is always preaching positivity. So I kind of, I kind of take their word for it, that positivity is the way. And um, when bad stuff happens, I don't like to read a lot about it. I think bad stuff is going to happen no matter what. Right. So yeah. to 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 add any bad things to your life is just useless because bad stuff is already going to come to you as a normal occurrence. Yeah, right on. Interesting. So how would you say it's going to happen to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And then that kind just kind of goes on to just kind of the advice you're saying before. You just have to keep on going. Just never stop. Even yeah. if it sucks, Spencer. <laughs> even if it sucks so bad. Because you think about it. Even Michael Jordan had nights where he had like seven points. Think about that. The best basketball player in the world. And one day he goes out and he barely scores any points. And he misses a bunch of shots. The beauty is that there's a game for him the next day that's already scheduled. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it's already going to happen. So the issue with people like you or people like me that are technically entrepreneurs, nobody's forcing us to make a video tomorrow. That you have to hold yourself accountable. You have to schedule that game tomorrow so that 
you can just get back in it, you know? Mm -hmm. Schedule that game for tomorrow so that you don't end on that negative note. You know what I mean? Do it. Do it so that you you don't dwell on that seven-point game that you had even though you're the best basketball player in the world. For sure. That's why those guys are so successful, Spencer, because they play so many games <laughs> that if they lose, they don't even they don't even think about it. They just move forward. Losing is such a normal part of their life that, you know, regular life becomes easier because you've already accepted that there's going to be some losing. You know, dwelling on that is useless. No, no, no. But putting action towards, yeah. you know, not happening again or being better in the future, that is not useless. That is I think that's the meaning of life. Mm -hmm. The meaning of life is to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. I fully believe that you could learn anything from everything, even just people or actions, nature. A yeah. Function, anything like, you want to learn, just, yeah. just wait. Just right wait. On. Just wait. Right on. I mean, thank you so much, Marcelo, that's for just chatting with me. Sorry, if you want to get your last thought in. No, yeah, that's my uh, that's my that's my advice. That's the last thing I want to say is is for everybody that's working really really hard and it hasn't paid off yet, just wait. Yeah, thank you just so much for taking just the wait. time for me. Do you have any last minute thoughts and anything you want to shout out? Um, man, I uh, I want to shout you out, Spencer. I thank want to shout you, you out for uh, for having this um, <laughs> having this podcast and being such a go getter at 16, 13 weeks into a podcast. I want you to verbally promise me you're not going to stop this for some dumb reason. I virtually pinky promise. Beautiful. Put it up. Just let me see it. Perfect. Just for everybody listening, he put his pinky up. So he's not going to stop this podcast for any dumb reason. Thank and you. then <laughs> um, number two, man, is, uh, is yeah, just don't stop doing this. This is dope. And um, if anybody wants to help me out, you know, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Marcelo, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-O-H-D-Z. And um, I'd appreciate it. Give me a follow. Um, and uh, yeah, man, thanks for having me, dude. I, I appreciate the time, Spence. Thank you. I know you're super busy, so I'm, I'm glad we are able to work something out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry I was late, but I'm glad we got it done. I understand. And, uh, let me know when it comes out. I'll share it. I'll, uh, I'll try to get you some more listeners. And uh, I appreciate your time, bro. I appreciate yours. All right, Marcelo. I'll keep you posted for what is to come. And until then, I will see you later. All right, man. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Luke Grumbo and Barney for the music I used in today's episode. Of course, thank you, Marcelo, for being the guest on today's episode. If you, the listener, want to hear more of Milky and Ardor, make sure you are subscribed and you'll be notified for whenever I post. In addition to that, if you want to see exclusive content, if you're not listening, if you're not listening in on YouTube, check out my YouTube and TikTok for there is exclusive content there of more interviews, more, yeah, pretty much just interviews. That's pretty much what I do. Please, you can really help me out by sharing Milking Ardor with a friend, a family, anyone you could possibly think of. If we spread the word of Milking Ardor, we can share as many stories to as many people as possible. And if people come to me with their story, I'd love to interview them. That brings me to my last and final point, really. If you want to be on Milking Ardor, reach out to me on Instagram at underscore Spence underscore R underscore. All you have to say is, hey, Spencer, let's do an interview and I'll schedule a time with you. We'll figure something out between us and we will make it happen. Thank you for listening to episode 15 and we will be back next Saturday and hear three amazing stories. That's it for me, folks. Until next time, I will see you later.